Well, let me ask you just to stick on artificial intelligence for a second. Do you have worries about existential threats from AI or existential threats from other technologies like nuclear weapons that could potentially destroy life on Earth or damage it to a very significant degree? Yeah, of course I do, especially the weapons that we create. There's all kinds of famous ways to think about this. And one is that, wow, what if we don't see advanced alien civilizations because of the danger of <laughs> uh, technology? What if we reach a point, and I think there's a, a channel, Thoughty 2. Jeez, oh, I wish I remembered the name of the channel. But he delves into this, this kind of limit of maybe once you discover radioactivity mm -hmm. and its power, you've reached this important hurdle. And the reason that the skies are so empty is that no one's ever <laughs> like managed to survive as a civilization once they have that destructive power. And uh, when it comes to AI, I, I, I'm not really very worried because I think that there are plenty of other people that are already worried enough. And oftentimes these worries are just, they just get in the way of progress and they're, they're questions that we should address later. And, you know, I, I think I talk about this in uh, my interview with um, the self-driving autonomous vehicle guy um, as I think it was a bonus scene from the trolley problem episode. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, what should a car do if like this really weird contrived scenario happens where it has to like swerve and like save the driver but kill a kid? And he's like, well, you know, what would a human do? And if we resist technological progress because we're worried about all of these little issues, then it gets in the way. And we, sh we shouldn't avoid those problems, but we shouldn't allow them to be stumbling blocks to advancement. So the, you know, folks like uh, Sam Harris or Elon Musk are saying that we're not worried enough. So the worry should not paralyze technological progress, but we're sort of marching, technology is marching forward without the, the key scientists, the developing a technology, worrying about the overnight having some effects that would be very detrimental to society. So, so to, to push back on your thought of the idea that there's enough people worrying about it, Elon Musk says there's not enough people worrying about it. Okay. So that, that's the kind of balance is, um, you know, it's like folks who are really focused on uh, nuclear deterrence are saying there's not enough people worried about nuclear deterrence, right? So it's an interesting question of what is a good threshold of people to worry about these? And if it's too many people that are worried, you're right, it'll be like uh, the the press would over report on it and it'll be technological, halt technological progress. If not enough, then we can march straight ahead into that uh, abyss that human beings might be uh, destined for with the progress of technology. Yeah, I don't know what the right balance is of how many people should be worried and how worried should they be, but we're always worried about new technology. You know, uh, we know that Plato was worried about the written word. He's like, we shouldn't teach people to write because then they won't use their minds to remember things. There, there have been concerns over technology and its advancement since the beginning of recorded history. Right. And so, you know, I think, however, these conversations are really important to have because again, we learn a lot about ourselves. If we're really scared of some kind of AI, like coming into being that is conscious or whatever and, and can self-replicate, we already do that every day. It's called humans being born. They're not artificial. They're, they're, they're humans, but they're intelligent. And I don't want to live in a world where we're worried about babies being born because what if they become evil? <laughs> right. <laughs> what if they become mean people? What if, they, what if they're thieves? Yeah. Maybe we should just like, what, not have babies born? Like maybe we shouldn't create AI? It's like, you know, we, we will want to have safeguards in place yeah. in the same way that we know, look, a kid could be born that becomes some kind of evil person, but we have um, laws, right? And it's possible that with advance of genetics in general, be able to, you know, it's a scary thought to say that you know, th this my child, if born, would be would have an eighty three percent chance of uh, being a psychopath, right? 
like b being able to, if it's a, something genetic, if there's some sort of, and what to use that information, what to do with that information is a difficult ethical thought. Yeah, and I'd like to find an answer that isn't, well, let's not have them live. <laughs> you know, right. I'd like to find an answer yeah. that is, well, all human life is worthy. And if you have an 83% chance of becoming a psychopath, well, you still deserve dignity. Yeah. And you and, still deserve to be treated well. And at, you still at, have rights. At least at this part of the world, at least in America, there's a respect for individual life in that way. That's, uh, well, to me, but again, I'm in this bubble, is, is a beautiful thing. But uh, there's other cultures where individual human life is not that important where a society, so I was born in the Soviet Union, where the strength of nation and society together is more important than the, any one particular individual. So it's an interesting also notion, the stories we tell ourselves. I like the one where individuals matter, but it's unclear that that was what the, what the future holds. Well, yeah, and I mean, let me even throw this out. Like, what is artificial intelligence? How can it be artificial? I really think that we get pretty obsessed and stuck on the idea that there is some thing that is a wild human, a pure human organism without technology. But I don't think that's a real thing. I think that humans and human technology are one organism. Look at my glasses, okay? If an alien came down and saw me, would they necessarily know that this is an invention, that I don't grow these organically from my body? They wouldn't know that right away. Mm -hmm. And the written word and spoons and cups. These are all pieces of technology. We are not alone as an organism. And so the, the technology we create, whether it be video games or artificial intelligence that can self-replicate and hate us, it's actually all the same organism. I, when you're in a car, where do you end and the car begin? It seems like a really easy question to answer. But the more you think about it, the more you realize, wow, we are in this symbiotic relationship with our inventions. And there are plenty of people who are worried about it and there should be, um, but it's it's inevitable. And I think the even just us think of ourselves as individu individual intelligences may be silly notion because, you know, it's much better to think of the entirety of human civilization, living, all living organisms on earth as a single living organism right? as a single intelligent creature. Because you're right, everything's intertwined. Everything is deeply connected. 